Hello everyone, uh, another update. This might be a bit longer because I've got quite a few links and things to talk about that's coming over the last month. So I'm going to start off with um, this story which is actually from September and it says NASA, MIT and DARPA researchers meet to discuss a discuss anti-gravity technologies. Now I'm not sure about this journal, I've not seen it before, whatever it is. It's sort of like it might even just be somebody's blog dressed up as a you know science website. I, I, I'm not sure what it is. Somebody sent it to me, I apologise, I've forgotten who it was. Um, but you know it looks quite interesting, exciting, but actually there's nothing new here. Um, they're talking about uh, a Zoom conference, that's all it was, and it says uh, 16 of the 71 participants in the November event were current or former NASA scientists engineers, according to Debrief, and 14 others were affiliated with reputable institutions, including MIT and the Harvard University. Among these marginal theorists, it is therefore very likely that one can find brilliant and realistic ideas. It almost sounds like this has been translated or something from another language and back again. It's, it, I don't know, maybe it hasn't, but um, the, the dream of defying gravity, you know, you can, you can see it right there, really. Um, this is all just people talking about things like warp drive, warp drive detectors, you know, um, and reading through this, it's just there's nothing here really of uh, certainly nothing of interest to me. Um, but it was, you know, I glanced through this and then I got to the end. And um, in the past, it says in the past everyone was aware of UFOs, but they weren't very relevant because they weren't well understood. Ventura told the debrief, adding that the scientific community is exploring the subject more seriously than ever. Mm. Well, we've seen all this before. I even touched on this. You know, this is sort of this to me is the other half of the of psychological operation that the ATIP thing is, where the ATIP is saying, "Oh, it's a security threat," and this is like, "Oh, isn't it exciting? Isn't it interesting? Let's let's go and look at it." You know, but we're never really going to find anything, are we? We'll just theorise. And uh, this Tim Ventura name is familiar to me because he was running a site called American Anti Gravity for quite some time. And uh, he did interviews with John Hutchison and Eugene Podkletnoff. Some actually some very good stuff. So to see him resurfacing here, having not apparently progressed, certainly not in this article, um, is a bit disappointing, really. And then at the top of this uh, article, it links to this website. And I re actually I recognise this font because this is the font that uh, Tim Ventura used for his American Anti Gravity site, and it looks like a really flashy site. But I think Tim Ventura is an IT person. And uh, this, to me, is just like a revamp of the American anti-gravity site. And we've even got um, uh, an interview with Bob Greenie, who I know. Uh, this was done uh, quite recently, actually. So you can go and listen to that if you want. I'll leave the links in the description. But again, you know, they're not discussing 9-11. They're not discussing what happened, really, and getting into it in any sort of serious way. It's all theorising. It's all sort of uh, pipe dream stuff, really, and ignoring what was already done. Uh, not only by Tim Ventura himself, but you know what's covered in my uh, secret space program book, for example. Okay, so moving on, but staying in similar territory, um, somebody sent me the latest uh, Professor Simon videos, and I, I, I don't know, I watched one of his videos earlier on. I, I don't really like this guy. Uh, there's something that makes me, that irritates me about him. I'm not sure quite what it is, and he's not a professor. This Professor Simon. Uh, and this video, which he did, for example, Star Wars Death Ray, which is talking about um, the spikes that were observed in the nuclear test explosions. And apparently these things are caused by the, 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 the guy rope wires vaporising or something. He talks about it in this video, but, you know, I think he's mixing together a lot of stuff and doing a muddle up, basically. Um, and this really is borne out in another video he did recently. He's been quite busy. I think he's done about four videos in about two weeks. This one was just at the end of last year, 30th of December. From Foo Fighters to Military Plasma Technology. Now, um, this video is one of his longer ones. It's 45 minutes long, and I, I didn't sit through all of it. But what it is, is it's a readout of this uh, Project Condine document that you can see here. 
and you can actually download this from Black Vault. Now I don't know much about um, this Condine report. I think there was quite a lot of talk about it when it came out. You can see it was posted in November 2020 here. I, I didn't really study it at the time I heard of it, but I mean it's, it's just another one of these document releases. A few interesting snippets in it. Very much I would imagine like the Cometa report, um, but maybe not going quite as far as that did. Um, and it talks about UAPs. It's interesting that they were using this term because I think um, this document was, I think, published in the late 90s and only released recently. Um, yeah, um, I think it was 1996, around that time. So, um, yeah, you can download this, uh, 260 megabytes. If any, anybody does find anything of interest, uh, please let me know. But this all seems to be part and parcel of what... Uh, well, let's go back to the um, Professor Simon, or the non-Professor Simon video, and I'll just try and play you a bit of this here. Here is the British view towards meeting and dealing with extraterrestrials. This is a published document based on serious scientific and deep thinking. What do we do if and when the aliens visit planet Earth? The conclusion is one, we would all, as a planet, know when aliens come to visit because it probably will be the last thing we ever know about. The UK... So isn't it interesting that he's showing the uh, alien invasion and talking about them taking over and stuff and, uh, you know, it being the last thing we'll ever know or think about um so you know i leave you to draw your own conclusions about what this guy's up to and um you know where he stands on things and um and then following on from that of course we're still getting this uh you know alien invasion threat being sort of put out in the media the shame stream media who seem to have uh you know, no conscience about anything really uh, and are quite under the control of those wanting to roll out the agenda. Uh, and this story was, as you see, from three or four days ago, five days ago, 28th of January. Good old Yuri Geller, uh, that CIA asset, or one-time CIA asset, or Israeli intelligence asset, warns NASA to prepare for alien invasion after baffling discovery. So there we are. So uh, moving on again, um, not too long ago I was sent another article by the person that's done this blog or this website, Evolution of Consciousness, uh, and it references some of the pictures and stuff in my Secrets in the Solar System book, uh, and it's quite an interesting article, and I'm, I'm not sure I go along with everything in here, but um, there's one particular bit that caught my attention again, as with uh, when this person produced an earlier article, and um, they're talking about the conditions on Mars. And, um, you know, th this person argues that these uh, the conditions are very different. And that, uh, for example, you know, these, these uh, buildings are being constructed by Martians and stuff. Um, you can read the article. So I'm not sure I'll go along with all of it. But again, some interesting thoughts and observations. Um, and the bit that really... Um, uh, it came out from this, which I was interested in, was a new report, which I think was published, um, let's see, uh, I'm not sure exactly when this was published, fairly recently, um, let me just pause this and get it back, there we go, it's published in uh, Mars, uh, Mars, March 2021, I suppose Mar March could be named after Mars, um, so, uh, yeah, so um, David Alexander Roffin, PhD in physics, and it's basically a critique of the Mars weather data, which has come out of NASA and JPL. And there's quite a few interesting bits in this. Uh, one bit, which is quoted in that article, which I'll, I'll go back to. 
So that Rothman report um, talks about, for example, Beagle 2, which was eventually found after 11 years on the surface of Mars, but the record shows suspect alteration of the landing ellipse size, and the full report was classified. Now, um, you can go back to this Rothman document here and look that up, but there's not a lot more in there. I, th I was hoping there might be something in there. And here, for example, it talks about um, the with an apparent timely reading of pressure by Omega and in hand from Mars Express, the Beagle 2 was detached from it to land on December 25, 2003. It was immediately lost, however. The lander was found largely intact on January the 17th, 2015. At um, that, that's a website link there. We discussed the discrepancies between original and revised landing coordinates and target ellipse size with ellipse size varying between 50 kilometer, uh, 50 kilometers by 8 kilometers to 500 kilometers by 100 kilometers. In the end, the claim was that Beagle 2 was only 5 kilometers off the target, but if that was true, it should not have taken 11 years to find it. Between 17th of January and 20, 2015, at 17th and 18th of January 2015, we saw major revisions in Wikipedia about the actual target. So they're looking at all this Mars data with quite um, you know, a critical eye. And uh, there is a, you know, there's lots of stuff in here. It would take quite a while to go through it all. Um, but I think, you know, looking at it from the perspective of uh, what Richard D. Hall and I discussed, um, it does make you wonder, uh, again, if they've considered this idea, the, the authors of this document, I mean, um, you know, if they've considered that the rovers aren't actually on, on Mars. Uh, let's see if I can just go down here a bit, the, because there is some you know, good examples of how the JPL seem to have changed the data. I think here I've found on page 33 um, and page 34, uh, pressure was 753 pascals falling on Sol 1299. It was 751 on Sol 1302. So when challenged, JPL changed high values for, for Sol's 1300, 945 pascals, and 1301 to an intermediate value of 752 PA. And so they, they talk about massive discrepancies in the pressure and temperature readings from places which are very close together on Mars. You know, they've looked at all of this, and uh, certainly the results seem, seem quite interesting and you know, could support the idea that the rovers, again, are not on Mars. I, I don't think they entertain that notion in this document but there's stuff about viking and stuff and all kinds of stuff so anybody that's interested can have a look at that so moving on a little more um it's funny how these things sometimes uh, join together i was recommended this comedy series uk comedy series by diane morgan about mandy who's this kind of vacant uh, um, young woman who who you know doesn't really have a purpose in life and she, you know she she, she uh, I'll just play a little bit of this on mute uh, just so you can get a picture of the character you know she's sort of this vacant rather um, you know se selfish uh, uh, rather silly um, English woman and uh, work sort of working class character um, but in this particular episode she gets picked for going to Mars. Uh, That's not the way it's it quite funny, um, but but you know I, I, I don't want to play all the whole thing obviously. But what interested me is, and the spoilers here, everyone, so anybody that's watched this, is that she does end up going to Mars, and they have this sequence where she gets in a rocket, and uh, you know then she lands on Mars, and you know, again they make not much of an effort with the set as you can see, but this appears to be part of the plot. Um, I'll maybe just play this bit, uh, this last bit here, and you can see what happens as they spoilers. Don't smoke! You should have sent a monkey. So I'll just skip it forward a little bit to, to, so you can see the final thing. You'll probably see it in the thumbnail there. And, 
as you see, it's revealed as a movie set. And in case you didn't uh, catch the, uh, and it's <laughs> they've put rain on here too. And uh, in case you didn't catch the music, it's uh, part of the Blue Danube. I think it's playing as the credits go on. So um, this was quite interesting. Is this some kind of nod that people involved with the program, you know, this seems like a nod to Capricorn 1 and, uh, you know, Blue Danube is in the 2001 film, which of course is directed by Stanley Kubrick. So are there some subliminal signs here? I don't really know, but I, I just found this quite odd that I'd watched this a few days after all this other stuff. And, um, you know, you, you can make of it what you will. I was just found it quite, I, I kind of you know, raised my eyebrows a bit, but there you are. Um, so yeah, so um, moving on to the last little bit then, uh, we're, we're up at uh, about 16 minutes now, so um, yeah, we have of course uh, yet another initiative by uh, the Liars at uh, AE911, AE911 Liars, and I understand, I don't know or care about the recent history, but I understand that Richard Gage has been booted out, I don't know who this guy is, um, and they're They've, they've amended a complaint in NIST lawsuit. Well, I don't know what they can do with NIST, um, but of course the, we know what they're not talking about. They're not talking about uh, Dr. Judy Wood and uh, what happened to the towers, etc., and all of that, which I've um, you know, talked about ad nauseam, so I'm not going to talk about it here. So there they are again, probably going to ask him for more money, uh, but I haven't looked at the latest thing. You know, I'm not going to look at it, frankly, uh, unless somebody tells me of a good reason to, because it's just going to be same old, same old with a new face. Um, but uh, just on that sort of subject then, to finish off, um, we had an interview with uh, Sean uh, Deodat, who's... Um, in London and he asked to have a chat with Dr. Judy so we did that we went through a little bit of the 9-11 uh, uh, heading straight towards Manhattan data, then it, it so, stops with the know, other bands can, at the edge um, of Long Island and uh, you know then afternoon it turns around starts heading out of town so you can um, go and listen to that uh, on my BitChute channel I didn't bother uploading it to YouTube and um, you know, make of that what you will. It, uh, Dr. Judy is okay, but at least uh, you, you'll get to see some of the, her latest thoughts on the COVID scam and stuff. So uh, really, that's um, all I've got to say for now. The links will all be in the description. Um, you, know, you can go over to Odyssey again. Um, if this gets stri struck from YouTube again, hopefully it won't, but you never know these days with the sorts of content I'm including. So... Um, that's it for now then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And obviously you can contact me through the website, etc.